The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways. Before he made anything from the beginning, I was set up from eternity. He that shall find me shall find life and shall have salvation from the Lord. Words taken from the lesson for the Immaculate Conception. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. At Lourdes in 1858, Our Lady requested of St. Bernadette to visit the grotto for 15 days in a row. After completing them, the beautiful lady stayed away. She kept silence. She kept her distance for three long weeks. Bernadette also stayed away, not being moved by grace to make a visit to this treasured location. She loved the grotto, but she didn't go. This behavior alone speaks of virtue. It indicates the apparitions were not from man, but from heaven. But then on March 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, Bernadette was moved by heaven to make her way to the grotto once again. Arriving early in the morning, she found the beautiful lady already in the niche, looking down upon the crowd with kindness and motherly concern. You can just imagine she was longing to have all their prayers answered. That's our mother. During this visit, though, Bernadette felt compelled once again to ask the beautiful lady her name, to reveal her name. She'd already been asked a number of times, and she just responded with a smile every time. This time, Bernadette asked three times until the most lovely and grace-filled lady made a sweeping motion with her arms in her hands looking up to heaven and then down again, not unlike what the priest does at the beginning of the canon of the Mass. At this moment, she declared solemnly, I am the Immaculate Conception. Then smiling, she disappeared. Ah, blessed be her holy and Immaculate Conception. This declaration, this definition of Our Lady as the Immaculate Conception is remarkable for many reasons. Among them is the confirmation of papal declaration of the Immaculate Conception defined by Pope Pius IX a few years earlier in 1854. Listen to Pope Pius XI speak about this. He says, What the sovereign pontiff defined in Rome through his infallible magisterium, the Immaculate Virgin, Mother of God, blessed among all women, wanted to confirm with her own words, it would seem, when shortly afterwards she manifested herself by a famous apparition at the grotto of Masabiel. Thank you, Pius XI. In other words, we had heavenly approval of the papacy, of the definition, and of infallibility all in one. Our Lady will watch out for the papacy. What is more, this declaration of our Heavenly Queen puts an end to any speculations about the so-called theory of theistic evolution, or any evolution at all. But theistic evolution particularly should be put to rest. Anytime someone comes to you that's a Catholic and says they believe in evolution, what is called theistic evolution, talk to them about this. You can't get around it. It's over with. Let's see what I'm talking about. A year after Lourdes, in 1859, Charles Darwin published his Origin of Species. And the doctrine, if proposed, the doctrine that this book proposed, wormed its way into almost everything that we do and know. In other words, it's wormed its way into all the sciences, including it's wormed its way into the faith, into our holy Catholic Church. Theistic evolution or evolutionary creation, as sometimes called, is a concept that asserts that classical religious teachings about God are compatible with the modern pseudo, in other words, fake science of evolution, about biological evolution. In short, theistic evolutionists believe that there is a God. They believe all that the church has said in her doctrines 
that he is the creator of the universe and by consequence all life within the universe and that biological evolution is simply a natural process within that creation evolution according to this view is simply a tool that God employed to develop the cosmos including human life so theistic evolution holds that humans evolved from lower species even single-celled species but with the intervention of God along the way okay so God used evolution as it went along sadly this fake science is held by many in the church today people like me get attacked for being against it but it's so obviously wrong how can I say that there's many things erroneous about it at a very high level of philosophy and just plain simple physics but there's also this reason according to the theistic evolutionists when apes finally appeared on the scene after who knows how many millions and billions of years they don't know no one knows because it doesn't exist but that's what they like to say Adam was conceived finally Adam came along in the womb of an ape and elevated by God by divine intervention to become a human can you imagine the surprise of those apes <laughs> but let's just stop right here wait a minute does this mean that an ape is in the line of David Adam came from the seed of an ape and from Adam came the entire human race including the bus of Virgin Mary from whom Christ took his flesh well where did Adam get his flesh from an ape does this sound right to you no none of us like it does this mean when Adam was born he was just a little human baby who then acted as the father of the father of the human race who taught him to walk who taught him to speak did he really suckle at the breast of an ape does this sound right does it make you feel good and wholesome no all of us are kind of going ugh. do not make any sense that's your face speaking by the way but we're speaking of the father of the human race here and it sounds like more miracles are required for this theory to be true than God making Adam from the slime of the earth it's more miracles are required it's ridiculous but that's still not the point because there's something very powerful here in the Immaculate Conception that utterly destroys theistic evolution and it's this if Adam were conceived in the womb of an ape then he too would have been immaculately conceived he's a little baby he hasn't committed the original sin yet thus he must have been conceived immaculately now wait a minute something's wrong this doesn't work on the level of faith it doesn't work why because our lady said I am the immaculate conception not one of many not one of three I am the immaculate conception okay that's an apparition let's let's add on to that a little bit is she telling the truth we can ask well let's turn to Pope Pius the ninth in his declaration of the immaculate conception he taught this the church has made it clear and indeed that the conception of Mary is to be venerated as something extraordinary wonderful eminently holy and here's the good part and different from the conception of all other human beings no exceptions different from the conception of all other human beings Adam could not have been conceived therefore in the womb of an ape for he would have been immaculately conceived and there's only one immaculate conception either the church and her perfect type the lady is wrong or evolution is an erroneous doctrine 
Take your pick. Are we going to follow the infallible, ordinary, and extraordinary magic dream of the church? Or are we going to give in to this pseudo-fake science? Come on. It's obvious. It doesn't work. And we should propose this to anybody who's a theistic evolutionist and says, oh, you can be Catholic and you can have evolution. Oh, so that's so. Have you studied the Immaculate Conception? Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Once again, it comes to our aid and crushes an error. Now, for Bernadette, this saying of Our Lady had a twofold significance, as time would prove. And these were her last words, it turns out, to the little visionary. Even though she would appear two more times, she didn't say anything else. This fact alone indicates that these words are important, they're meaningful. But second of all, these words also broke down the adversity of the clergy. Now, at Lourdes, the clergy, acting correctly, rightly resisted Bernadette to see if what she was doing came from heaven or from hell. The clergy had a deep responsibility to lead the sheep and guide them safely. And that requires much prudence and discernment of spirits. So one of St. Vincent de Paul's preferred methods of discerning was simply just to say no to everything. People were always proposing things to me, say, no, go away. He would say no until heaven made it plain that it was God's will. And then he'd say, okay, I'll do it. And look at all the things he did. But he was always saying, no, get away, get away. Prove it to me that it's from heaven, because I'm not going to do it unless I know it's from God. St. John of the Cross describes similar things in his ascent of Mount Carmel. So the Dean of Lords wanted to be sure. He wanted sure and reliable proofs that heaven was speaking. And among them, he asked for the name of the lady. In the meantime, they would remain aloof, silent about the happenings at the grotto. And nothing worked to break this silence, as did the exclamation of Our Lady, I am the Immaculate Conception. Soon the Dean of Lords took to defending Bernadette against all attackers. And he built a chapel at the grotto so that the Son of Man might descend upon the altar and take up his abode in the tabernacle. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. For us, among other things, we can take the three weeks of silence as a type, an image of the Old Testament that is only ended with the angel coming down from heaven to Blessed Mary and announcing the Savior. The long-awaited Messiah has come. The silence was broken. God was going to speak His word in the flesh. But what broke the silence? The presence of the Immaculate Conception upon the earth. That's what broke the silence. Soon the church was made visible to the whole world to enter. Thanks to her presence, again, blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. So here then is our lesson today. The immaculate conception breaks the silence or the delay of heaven. The immaculate conception can end the wrath of God. She opens the bridge between heaven and earth. And it seems to me that this is very important at this time. Let us not lose hope at the silence of heaven in our day. I think some are. Some wonder when it's going to get over with. What's going to happen? Trust. Heaven will not be silent forever. The Immaculate Conception is here. She will work. Because this very same Immaculate Conception is watching over us as she was on that day when Bernadette arrived early. She hears our pleas and will soon speak somehow to convert the clergy at the highest levels to do her bidding. In other words, the bidding she made clear, abundantly clear at Fatima. So that the world will have the one true church as its chapel. And there will be processions. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Now for us personally to experience the same effects... We ought to be praying three Hail Marys in the morning before, and three Hail Marys at night. We get out of bed and before we go to bed, we should be saying three Hail Marys. But we should say it with this invocation. It's approved by the church and indulged. 
By thine immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. I'll put it in the bulletin this coming Sunday. By thine immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. Hail Mary, full of grace. Three times. She will help us silence the foe and the evil of sin. Now, turning to the Via Negativa, we can make one or two more points on the same idea. In other words, the Immaculate Conception silences doubt, as we just explained with, the, with uh, theistic evolution. Nay, even it silences temptation, blasphemy, and atheism. She quells revolution. Pope Pius IX explained how the Immaculate Conception will deliver us from threatening dangers. Through her, errors will be dissipated. And she will remove spiritual blindness from those who are in error. Blessed be her holy and Immaculate Conception. Be sure to present the Immaculate Conception to any of your theistic evolutionary friends. It cannot be. They will not get around it because you can't get around it. At Lourdes, on the second of the 15 days of visits, St. Bernadette experienced this personally. During her rapture before the beautiful lady, a mob of devils working from the river Gav tried to interfere with things. They came alive and there's this cacophony of voices and one big guttural voice spoke out the loudest, get out of here, yelling at her, get out trying to scare her. A mere glance, however, from the immaculate conception positioned in the niche above rendered the demons silent. She sent them packing back to hell. Again, we have something if we're struggling with. You want to conquer it? Pray by thine immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. Hail Mary. And now I'll end with a final example. The atheistic, anti-clerical, 19th century Jewish man, Alphonse Radisbone, was challenged by a friend, a baron, to wear a miraculous medal while visiting Rome. If you're so tough, if you're so, you know, sure of yourself, come on, wear this medal, I dare you. And he wore it. It was a challenge. When touring a small church waiting for his friend, the baron, Alphonse suddenly had a vision of the Immaculate Virgin Mary. He fell on his knees. And upon coming out of this rapture, he later wrote, I seized the medal which was on my breast. I fervently kissed the image of the Virgin. Oh, it had indeed been she. I was not able to speak. I did not wish to discuss what had happened. I felt within me something so solemn and so sacred as to require me to speak, ask for a priest. His anti-clericalism was over. I want to see a priest. Alphonse continued to kiss his miraculous medal, which was wet with tears. He begged his friend, the baron, to take him immediately to a priest, saying he did not know how he could continue to live without baptism. This is the same day. He now saw clearly why he had come to Rome and how very wrong he had been heretofore. The baron took him to the church of Santa Maria Maggiore and then to St. Peter's to give thanks to God. The baron recounted, he not only believed in the real presence, he felt its reality. When he was approaching the altar of reservation, he seemed quite overcome and as though he ought at once to withdraw. For it seemed to him a horrible thing to come before the living God in a state of original sin. He went immediately to take refuge in the chapel of Our Lady, saying, Here at least I am not fearful, for I know myself to be under the protection of boundless mercy. Radisbon declared, it was she herself that I beheld in reality. I saw her just as I see you now. But his eyes were unable to bear the brightness of the heavenly light when he did have the vision. Three times he tried to look at her, her face, and each time he was unable to raise his eyes beyond her hands. From there poured out 
rays of light just as is seen on the metal. Torrents of grace in the appearance of rays of light. Alphonse received baptism within a week. He was immediately reconciled to his brother who preceded him in the Catholic faith and later joined him to become a priest, ever seeking the conversion of the Jewish people. Among the converts of those two priests, brothers, were a total of 28 members of their family. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. The immaculate conception puts an end to silence, an end to wrath, an end to doubts, an end to delay of heavenly intervention, an end to blasphemy, heresy, error, fake science, atheism, and as we saw with Alphonse Radisbon, an end to anti-clericalism. How well Pope Pius tonight spoke in saying, the Immaculate Conception will deliver us from threatening dangers. Through her errors will be dissipated, and she will remove spiritual blindness from those who are in error. And as we heard in the lesson, he that shall find me shall find life and shall have salvation from the Lord. O oh, Immaculate Mary, conceived without original sin, Pray for us who have recourse to thee. Immaculate heart of Mary, be our salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.